Hello, my name is Trent Robertson, and I'm from the Department of Electrical Engineering at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I'm going to show you a great freeware program that you can use to design and prototype your own electronics for free. It's called Fritzing, and you can find it at fritzing.org. Now, I have a board that I'd like to make. It's very simple. Basically, I have a 14-pin IC, and I need certain pins to be broken out so that I can program it with an AVR programmer. The programmer that I'm going to be using, or at least this is the adapter for it, this is what I need uh, connecting to my IC, which is the ATtiny84. So these pin labels all need to match the pin labels on the destination. So I'm going to fabricate a board that does this in fritzing. So when you open Fritzing, you'll be presented with this breadboard design. And all the parts that you need to add should be over here on the right. For ICs, generally you'll end up adding a generic IC. And you can change the number of pins and the labeling and everything over here in this uh, inspector window. So I'm going to call this ATtiny84. And if you want, you can edit the pin labels so that when you hover over the pins in the editor, it will actually tell you what the label is, which is definitely convenient uh, when you have a lot of things to connect. But uh, this isn't a very complicated project, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but what I will do is split the view here so I can observe the data sheets while I actually connect everything. I'm going to add a generic female header so that I can put header pins on this and just connect it into this female header and uh, that should speed up the, c the connection process a little bit. Okay, so the first connection here is going to be ground and then we've got 5 volts and then we've got MISO which is going to be pin 8 down here we've got SCK which is pin 9 uh, this isn't the right pin. What am I doing? There we go. There we go. Uh, reset is pin 4. And MOSI is pin 7. Now let's connect our power and ground. Okay, that's all the connections. Now if we go over to the PCB plane, let's uh, bring these parts in as close as we can. And we'll maximize this. Let's make this a single layer PCB and we'll shrink it down. Let's change our grid spacing so we can align things a little bit easier. Right now it's kind of small. Let's make it uh, 0.1. Okay. We'll do the inner pins first. When you fabricate a circuit, you generally want to avoid right angles. It can cause distortions in the signal, or uh, could even uh, reflect, and it can reduce or attenuate the signal that's going through. Um, but I generally make right angles first, and then go in and fix it after. But, you know, a couple won't hurt, especially on power and ground. Those are just DC signals. Those shouldn't be too affected. So, well, left that guy out. Okay, this looks good. I'm going to resize the board a little bit more. Can even tighten this up a little bit.
So this is ready for fabrication. Um, let's save it first. And this is going to be... I'm going to save it over the one I've already got here, the Tiny 84 AVR adapter. Yes. And now we're going to export extended Gerber files. Okay, now I'm going to transfer these files over to the other computer that we have connected to the milling machine. Um, okay. We'll go ahead and send these over, overwrite all. Before we get started, we need to check the pump. There may be some moisture left over from a previous session, so we're just going to drain that. Eh, there was a little. Close that back up. We'll turn the pump on. And we'll turn on the machine. Adjust the pressures as they're labeled on the front. Okay. Now I'm going to import those files that we just transferred. There they are. So these files all represent different layers of uh, the circuit board, with the contour being the outer edge. The copper bottom is all of the copper traces on the bottom of the board. Drill contains the drill positions and sizes. Mask is a solder mask. I'm not sure what the PNP is, and the uh, silk top and bottom are labels, you know, visual labels that you can print onto the board later. So we'll import all of these. Then maybe we can have a look at the PNP and figure out what that is. So this is a prompt basically confirming your unit convention. And sometimes uh, the program can hang a little while if you import a lot of files at once. Hopefully that window comes back. Um, there it is. Usually the first... oh, what is this? Yeah, this PNP file probably is not going to import correctly. I don't even know what it is, so that doesn't really matter. But uh, here is our circuit that we just pulled over from Fritzing. <laughs> Pretty cool. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is isolate our copper traces. So go to Tools, Isolate and uh, you'll have to pick a tool that's in the pod over here so if you want to check what tools you have available you can hit this tools button and it will tell it will tell you what you have where and how it's programmed to to mill so rpm is how fast the bit spins uh, you want to make sure it's not too fast or too slow otherwise it'll break bits the feed inches per minute is uh, how fast it moves across the plane while it's milling. Depth of cut is how deep into the board you're cutting, which generally should be very low for making your isolations and very deep for your contour and drills. So I see we've got a 15 mil end mill that uh, we could use, or an 11. Generally a higher size, a bigger size is better because there is less likelihood of uh, shorting out anywhere on the board. So uh, we'll try to use the 15 mil. So I'm going to go to tools, isolate, and select the copper and I'm going to type in 15 end mil, okay, uh, isolate. Okay, that's perfect. I can see it got in all of these different areas. I see there not going to be any shorts or anything anywhere. So next up, we'll program our drill holes. Fritzing obviously uh, chose its own drill hole sizes. We could have modified it back in the program, but uh, I find it's better to do that at the fabrication stage. 
This window shows what tools are actively being used in the project. So these are the drill holes that Fritzing programmed. Uh, looking in the pod, I see we've got a 40 mil. Uh, so let's just expand these out a little bit. So these drill holes all just got a little bit bigger. The last step is the contour. Uh, let's hide all of our layers over here by right clicking and uh, here we're gonna change just the contour to edit and there are a couple ways we can do this I personally like going into the layers menu and changing the contour layer type to router now it's programmed to use a contour router but we need to change the uh, tool that it uses for that it defaults to uh, 8 mil drill or something. Yeah, here it is. So we're going to change this to a 23.6 router. And now we've got all of our layers. But before we get started, we're going to have to initialize the uh, milling machine. So I'll go ahead and hit that. That's going to take a moment. Okay, the mill is initialized and uh, pretty much ready to go. The uh, copper board that I have in place already has some uh, circuits milled into it, so I'm going to have to move this onto a different part of the circuit board. This program is uh, a little taxing on the CPU. Okay, so we're going to change all our layers to edit so we can move them all. And let's move it over to this corner of the board over here. Now we're going to want to mirror these layers. And uh, since the milling machine is actually pretty good at automating itself, we can uh, merge all of the uh, tasks together into one so that it'll first mill out the isolation traces and then it'll put the bit away and then it'll pick up a drill put the holes in and put that bit away and then it'll pick up a router and actually cut it out all in one process so in order to do that you can go into layers first we'll mirror everything uh, since I'm gonna want to solder through the top so we're gonna mirror our contour we're gonna mirror our drills and we're gonna mirror our isolation then we're going to select them all and we're going to merge them and we're going to call this bottom layer now we're going to tell the machine to touch down over here to sense the depth of the board before it mills out by selecting the contact by touch is over here on the toolbar otherwise you could go to uh, what was it uh, tools contact by touch set target area so you'll generally want to put that near your board and typically putting it towards the outer edge you know closer to the outer edges of the PCB is better so I might even put it here um, okay this is good to go um, now I'm going to hit mill, run layer, bottom layer, and it's going to prompt you what order you want to uh, do everything here. I like to mill out the isolations first, and then it'll drill the holes, and then it'll cut the board out. And I'm going to hit OK, and hopefully everything will work.